Hi guys, Andrew from Boxing Bros UK here. Um, thanks for tuning in, all you, you lovely people um, that may have been tuned in. We're, we're, um, we're up to about 130 odd subscribers now. And uh, if you could sort of um, give us some likes and some more subscribers so our content can reach a, a, a broader amount of people, that would be great. Um, something I wanted to do, I wanted to do a little quick video on on Wilder's legacy, like what is, and it was something I was watching proper boxing, and um, who I quite like, so I'm plugging them proper proper boxing. Just thinking about Wilder, and and, and to a certain degree, Fury's legacy. And if, if we kind of look back on Wilder, and my kind of analysis is, and a phrase I like to use is that he, this was a subpar boxer with a world class right hand at least certainly in his prime. Um, but still, you know, the bronze bomber, you know, Olympic bronze medalist, you know, certainly of some pedigree. And I think his, his athletic abilities and his power was so good that it, it's almost like things came out of the camp. There was a podcast with Mark Breland, I remember, that, that spoke about him, was trying to teach him the jab a little bit more and he, he kind of didn't want to know and would kind of go through that in training and, and too many yes men in the camp, you know, DS and Malik Scott, you know, was a was a disastrous move. If anything, he seems to have regressed and gone backwards and look, his career's finished potentially. I mean, he then might be. I mean, where does he go? You know, I think he doesn't really beat anyone in the top 10, does he? You know, every time he's come up against an elite operator, he seems to have struggled other than Luis Ortiz, you know, won his title off of off Stavern defended his title for many years but you know was all, and this thing people say oh you know he can't but he, he's never been a great boxer I mean I remember him being outboxed by Spilka and Luis Ortiz in both fights but once he was able to connect and find that right hand which was massively te telegraphed and uh, obviously over the last few years and not necessarily even I don't know how much of the Fury fights took it out of him but he just went completely gun shy, didn't he? Um, and there, and I don't want to get into too many of the reasons as to why that is. I want to talk a little bit more about his legacy, and because I thought of there was that period, wasn't there? You know, talking about him, him and Fury, like they were the, the, the you know, AJ was kind of, uh, you know, was kind of demonised, and Usyk was sort of steadily kind of finding his ground after coming up from cruiserweight, finding his way in the heavyweight division, and. And wasn't really being spoken about, although all, all us hardcore fans knew that he was going to be a massive problem with the skill level he's got. Um, but we were talking about, more mainstream media talking about a Wilder and Fury are number one and two in the world. And actually you kind of look back now and go, did we kind of overstate that? Did we, was um, we looking too much into that albeit amazing trilogy? You know, yeah, I, I, it's a funny one with Wilder because, again, if, every time, you know, Tyson Fury, Shuli Zhang, Luis Ortiz, Joseph Parker, every time he stepped into the ring with someone in the top 10, he's lost or struggled. Um, and you kind of go back for his resume, and look, his KO ratio is, is terrific. But you kind of, if you really scrutinise that CV, it doesn't hold up as much. Now, look, power is power, and he had God-given power. But if you compare it to someone like AJ's resume, I mean, let's be honest, resume, I'm saying American, CV, curriculum v tie. I mean, AJ's fought all comers, Usyk twice, you know. Well, not necessarily fighters within their prime, but pretty much all long comers. Or all, all he's, you know, he's taken on pretty much everybody that's been put in front of him, other than other than Fury and Wilder. And and we can get into a debate about why those Wilder fights. You know, I I would likely looking looking at it now, you kind of think Wilder would be would have been in banging trouble against AJ, eating a few of those right hands, unless he could have landed first, of course. But anyway, I'm going to sort of round it off here, but. I'd like some people to make some comments. What what do you make of Wilder's legacy? Has the sheen been taken of it? Was he as good? Was he this great heavyweight that some people say? I'm not so sure. I don't think so. I think my overall summary is that this was a average at best boxer 
that didn't sacrifice himself to the craft of boxing um, and got rid of, you know, world-class trainers such as Mark Breeding, who was a great fighter in his day. And, you know, I remember even Lennox Lewis, there was a video kind of showing him the jab and showing him, this is kind of how I throw it. And he just seemed to regress, didn't he, as he got older. And look, he's had a fantastic career, made loads of money. I know he got into it for his family and all credit to him. You know, he's had a brilliant career. But you just kind of think he could have made even more money. He could have done even more, you know, if he hadn't have maybe ducked some of the fights, which, which we're led to believe that he did. But I just think, looking back after the last few years, um, this is a guy that was a, was a, a subpar boxer with a world-class right hand. And when he stepped up a level people worked out how to nullify that right hand to keep away from the right hand um, and if you've only got one weapon or very few weapons and you take that weapon away what have you got left and I think unfortunately this is what we now see with Wilder who's who's obviously um, nearly 40 and um, with I don't think anything else to give but I just wanted to we, we did a video on it but I just wanted to put another one out there but anyway peace guys Boxing Bros UK this has been Andrew from Boxing Bros UK please hit us a sub and uh, check out our videos cheers